I am really excited to be with you. Uh, we, this is my, here's the deal. I, I promised that I wouldn't point out my family and bring them up here. So I'm not going to do that, but I will tell you that my family, they are the loudest ones in the room. So when they, when I say something that they like, they are going to be the loudest ones and they're going to say, amen, praise the Lord. Keep going, preach that. So if you're wondering who my family is, just listen, because they're going to be the loudest ones in the room. Is that right? That's right. Amen. I'm going to meet that family after service. I went to, um, the Lord's been speaking to me as I was asking him about the Rock of Roseville and Lord, where do you want to go this morning? Because if I'm being honest, if he isn't here and if he isn't moving, there are no words that I can share that will change lives. I am not the life changer. I <laughs> know, shocking. <laughs> Unless you are already thought this morning, I'm going to come see Kathy. She's going to change my life. I am so sorry to disappoint. That is not going to happen for you today. But it is when we encounter the Lord and he invites us into a new place that maybe we didn't even know existed for ourselves, or maybe we knew and we tasted, but we haven't seen it for a very long time. I believe today the Lord is going to invite us to go into those new places with him. I want to share with you a couple of quotes, and the first one is from Graham Cook. If you're familiar with Graham Cook, I love this man. He is such a prophetic father, and uh, in his book, Living in Dependency and Wonder, which is such a fabulous book, he says this. He quotes Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, and, and that says, when he ascended on high, speaking of Jesus, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Now he ascended, what does that mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended. The reason why I'm saying it like this is because otherwise we don't understand it because there's a lot of ascended and descended. The one who ascended far above the heavens that he might fill all things. This is what Graham says in regards to that passage. In all his dealings, God takes initiative. He comes down so that we can be lifted up. He came to us so that we would come to him. He initiates, we respond. The day we gave our life to Christ was a product of his promptings. He invaded our time and space with his love, drawing us to him, and this pattern never wavers. Our lives continue to unfold in that same way as they did when God saved us. He initiates. We respond. I want to share with you, and uh, the Lord reminded me of this moment this morning. And one of the things that we are seeing happen all over the nation right now is the power in baptism. And this is not where I'm going. At least I didn't think this is where I was going. But there is something that the Lord is doing. It is like he is reconciling his children back to him. And all of the gunk that has happened along the journey in that moment of baptism is being washed off. It is almost as if it is like this in your face to the enemy. This one is mine and you cannot have them anymore. And we're seeing it again and again and again. And I was telling Brandon this week of a, um, I was recently in another state. And I was in the senior pastor's office and I was having a prayer time with um, a person and they were needing freedom. And I kept hearing this whisper. The Lord was saying, I'd like for you to baptize her. And I'm looking, most senior pastor's offices don't have a baptismal pool. So... I didn't know, like, how are we going to accomplish this, Lord? Because this, is, this isn't looking probable. And uh, so I had a team member with me, 
And I whispered, I was like, here's what I'm hearing. And she said, I'm hearing that too. And I was like, okay, well, the senior pastor's office just got remodeled. New leather seats, new carpet, beautiful. And we are about to do this right here and now. We may not get invited back. So my partner went and she got a bottle of water. I've already drank half of this, so trust me, I'm not going to pour this on your head today. I do have a new one right down there, so no guarantees. But uh, as this woman was sitting there, I began to pour this water over her head and declare everything that had tried to attach to her. In Jesus' name, be gone. And she, what we had been trying to do through prayer was done in a moment when we baptized her. For me personally, I was baptized at the age of six um, in my father's church. And several years ago, I asked the Lord, I was just headed to bed. And as often as I do, I asked him, is there any place of surrender that I am unaware of that I need to give to you? When I was waking up the next morning, I had this dream that I was at Bethel on stage, we don't, we don't go to Bethel. We don't drive two hours to go to church every Sunday. So this dream felt really weird to me. So I was on the stage at Bethel, and I was in a line of people being baptized. And then I woke up, and then that dream turned into a vision because it kept going. So I called my spiritual mom, Joe Moody, who we all know pretty well, and I said, what should I do with this? This is really wild. Because in my dream that turned into a vision, when I went under the water, I came out and the power of God came on me so strong that I actually couldn't move and they had to drag me out of, out of the pool. And so I was like, well, I don't know if I even want to do that. Like who would want to do that in front of hundreds of people? And Joe, in Joe's fashion, said, I think you should go. I think you should do it. I was like, okay, well. So I know that they have a picture. I just want to tell you that I have not shared this photo with anyone except for a few close friends and also my family. And there they are over there yelling. So this is me. And now you can take it down. And, <laughs> and what happened was, as I was going under, that pastor who was baptizing me said, I believe the power of God is going to come on you like he's never come on you before while you're in the water and you are going to come up and you are going to carry the fire of God in you. And I was like, okay, here we go. So sure enough, he baptizes me as I go down under the water and I come back up. I can feel the fire of God and the power of God coursing through me. And then I thought, I think I might drown if, if nobody gets me. Like if I'm supposed to do this myself and get myself out, it's not happening. But I was so shocked that God initiated he gave me that dream, and he said, daughter, this is what I want to do. And I responded. I also want to share with you, and I've been, if I'm just being honest, I've been looking for a place to share this video, and you all are going to thank me. Um, and so I'm going to share this, and if you didn't know, Casey and I were cowboys in our other life. So we can go ahead and share this video. This is Pearl and Wildfire. I could watch that all day long, but 
we have somewhere with the Lord that we need to go. So that is a video of Pearl and Wildfire. If you didn't catch which one is Wildfire, um, Wildfire was the crazy one. That once those two got let out, Wildfire just went crazy and Wildfire did whatever Wildfire wanted to do. But Pearl, Pearl is the one that, that that whole carriage of Clydesdale horses was going somewhere. They were on a mission in that arena. And when Pearl was let loose and let out, Pearl found her mom and without any restraints on her and any bridling or any harnessing, Pearl got in line with her mom. And if you noticed her gait, began to mirror her mom's. She chose Pearl. I'm guessing it's a she. Is it a she? Of course. Pearl. Who would, who would name a boy horse Pearl? It, it, no. <laughs> that was not in California, but Lord bless us. Bless California in Jesus' name. Pearl will be a female horse. So Pearl gets in line with what her mom is doing. And she hasn't been told to. She just decided to get there because she knew that that was where she needed to be. I'm going to share with you a story. And I'm only going to do a little bit of this backstory because I think that it is relevant for what the Lord is doing today in this season. Proverbs 29.18 says, If my people can't see what God is doing... They stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. That word see means Hassan, and it actually means divine revelation. So when we receive divine revelation and communication from the Lord, we are able to follow him. But stumble all over themselves actually means when they neglect or they get loose of the vision, they stumble all over themselves. There's a familiar story in Genesis, and it's in 13, Genesis 13, but then it goes to Genesis 19. And here's the deal. If you're unfamiliar with this story, I invite you to read it as a bedtime story tonight. Uh, it's all about Lot and Abraham. Abraham is an uncle. Lot is the nephew. They have so many possessions. They are living in the same area and the same territory. The territory that they're living in cannot contain the amount of possessions that these two own. So Lot actually looks for another place to live. And he looks out and he sees the vicinity of Sodom and Gomorrah. If you're familiar with those two words, uh, living in California and being a Christian, I'm sure you've probably heard that over certain areas of our state. So Sodom and Gomorrah is this fertile, beautiful ground. And Lot says, I'm going to go and I'm, I'm going to take that area for myself. So he does. He moves to that vicinity. He moves to the area of Sodom and Gomorrah. What happens is this area is actually really frustrating to the Lord. They have so many possessions, so many, but they are not honoring the Lord. And not only are they not honoring the Lord, they're taking it a step further. So in Genesis 19.13, it says, the Lord is frustrated with the people. He's angry with what they've been doing and he's angry with what they haven't been doing. These angels share with Lot, for we will destroy this place because of the outcry against them. It has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord sent us to destroy it. How pleasant. Lot's family is invited to step away from that area. But in verse 17, this is, this is the warning for them. Do not look behind or stay anywhere in the plain, but escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed. And in Genesis, 20, in Genesis 19, 25, and 26, 
So he, the Lord, overthrew these cities, all the plains, all the inhabitants of the city, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife looked behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. It's a bummer. It's not like the salt that we see on the tables. It's a lot of salt. Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord, and he looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and he saw smoke rising from the plain. I want to break this down just a little bit because this is very discouraging. <laughs> and we are actually going to press in and ask the Lord, what do you want us to learn from this story? Because interestingly, in Luke 17, 20, Lot's wife is brought back again. Anytime we see somebody from the Old Testament who's brought back again in the New Testament, we need to take notice. Look back means navat, and it actually means to look and regard, to regard with pleasure or care. So that is the posture of Lot's wife, is they are leaving a familiar territory, and they are walking towards what they are unsure of, but the Lord is leading them. And she looks back with regard. She wishes that hey, I really liked that lifestyle. I really liked what we were doing there. And I'm not sure that this ahead is any better than that behind. In Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 23, it says, now when he, this is Jesus, was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there. Because they were asking, is the kingdom of God going to come in Jerusalem? Is the kingdom of God going to come in this place or in this church or over here? And Jesus is abolishing their desire to know exactly where the kingdom of God is going to show up. And sometimes we do that. We want to know, is the kingdom of God in OC right now? Or is the kingdom of God over here in New York or Florida or Australia? Is the kingdom of God in this church? Or is it moving in this church? And God himself is saying something far greater. And this is what we need to grab a hold of. Jesus says, indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. He says to his disciples, there's going to come a day when people want to see they want to know and they'll tell you, look here, he's moving here. And look here, he's moving here. And Jesus is cautioning his disciples. And he actually says, just like in the days of Noah and just like in the days of Lot, people were building their own kingdoms. They were building their own possessions. He says, be ready. Don't grip onto those things. And then in Luke 17, 32, he says, remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. It's such a bizarre thing for Jesus to say in that moment. Because if you break down the text, when he says, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. That word save right there means sozo. We're all very familiar with the word sozo. It means to heal, whole, heal the person completely. Lot's wife, by turning back, she was trying to preserve her own life by everything that was behind her, everything she knew, her prominence, her title, her position, their wealth, all of it. She was trying to preserve her own life, sozo her own life by the things in the past. What happened was she became a pillar over that area. And what's wild is that word, pillar, actually means to become an official. What she carried became an official and an officer in that area. 
And the wild thing is, I didn't know this, I had to look it up. Too much salt in the soil causes crops to not be able to grow. So here is this fertile ground. It is producing so much for this family and for other families. And yet, because of what she carried, she became a pillar of salt over that entire region. And it lost its ability to actually grow. The crazy thing is that seed that is placed in soil that's too salty cannot germinate. If it ever germinates at all, it's very slow. So what in the world does that mean for us? I'm going to be really real, okay? Sometimes we look at the things of the past and want them to save us for the future. But I will tell you that we are in a season where the Lord is inviting us, do not look to the past, look to the future. There has been a reset, a shuffle, a shaking that has happened. And he is inviting us, look to the future. Sometimes we can look at past ministries, past relationships. We can look at past revivals, past anointings that we've carried. And we can feel like those are the ones that are going to take us into the new land, into the new territory. But we are in a season where the Lord is saying, I'm not going to let you take any of that because that's all baggage. You lay the baggage down at my feet. You walk freely into the new season and into the new territory. I am doing a new thing. Can you perceive it? This week, I was asking the Lord about the people of the rock. And he told me, it's not bad, don't worry. <laughs> he told me that you are people with tenacity. Hey. Tenacity means to be able to grip tightly or hold on tightly to something. Sometimes we can have tenacity for all the wrong things. Do you know that? <laughs> we can have tenacity for the wrongs that we've endured, for the wounds, for the titles that we have, for, for the positions, for the seats. We can hold on tenaciously for a lot of things. You are called, though, to hold on to the kingdom of God. When you break down, because I was asking the Lord, well, that's a really cool word over these people. And he said, that's not all, daughter. And he asked me to break it down. When you break down that word, tena and city. Tena is a Latin term, and it means strong and healthy. The Lord's desire is for the Rock of Roseville to be a strong and healthy city. Where the pillars that are here are strong and moving and advancing his purposes. We can be pillars for a lot of things, you guys. We can be pillars for bitterness, and we can be pillars for offense. We can be pillars like, I don't know if you heard Aaron's sermon. He nailed it, and if you didn't hear it, you need to go back and you need to listen to it. We can be pillars for the political spirit. We can be pillars for the religious spirit. But those are not allowed in the kingdom of God, and he will not move with you if you decide to be a pillar of the political spirit or the religious spirit or a pillar of bitterness or a pillar of offense. You have to put those things behind you. We are called to be his pillars and his pillars alone. We are called to carry the things of his kingdom. I bless you in Jesus' name. I pray for more over you right now in Jesus' name. 
So Rock of Roseville, I'm going to ask you to stand right now with me. In Isaiah 43, 19, it says, Behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. I am doing a new thing. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Guys, I gotta tell you, I travel all over the United States of America. I've heard so many words over California. I've heard so many words that are not good. I do not agree with them. I have always said, if I'm living in Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord, let me know. He has not called me out, he has called me in. So I wanna tell you, we are not a wasteland, but we need people, sons and daughters, of our heavenly father to rise up in these days, to be the ones who say, I will be the living water. You can pour your living water into me. I will pour it out. I will not hold it for myself. You can pour yourself through me. I want you to say these things with me. You don't have to be afraid of them because I wouldn't have you say anything that you should be afraid of. I believe that even as we, hey, I just pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you would move, that you would touch those who have been stuck, hey, that you would invite them to lay down those things that have been in the past, that have been trying to stay with them and keep them from the future. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move. I thank you that you invite and we respond in Jesus' name. Even now, Father, I thank you for all of those times that you touched me with your fire and with your power. And that I said every time I will never go back. I will never be the same. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move in this room. I thank you for your invitation. So I pray right now that you would even begin to move on my friends. I thank you that there is always more with you. In Jesus' name. I believe that there are some of you that the Lord is touching and he is ministering to you even right now. And you are hungry for his touch. And I just want to invite you. <laughs> I just want you to invite you up to the front. And I do have team. I have some agape team who's here with me. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I bless you, Natalie, in Jesus' name. And pray for more. I want you to say these things with me. And this is our declaration that we are headed into a new place with our Father. Everything that He wants us to walk in, that we are willing to lay down the past, to pick up the new, and we may not even know what that is. So I want you to say with me, I am God's pillar of safety and covering. I am God's pillar for healing and deliverance. I am God's pillar, hey, for freedom. I am God's pillar for generational unity. I am God's pillar of his presence. I am God's pillar of hope. I am God's pillar of purity and holiness. I am God's pillar of building up. I am a pillar, hey, of my Father's kingdom. Because my Father's kingdom lives in me. In Jesus' name, I want you to say, Holy Spirit, come and fill me every place that needs a fresh filling. I pray for you to come 
In Jesus' name. I just want you to stay here right now. If you are seeing God's moving on someone out here, not up here because we have these, but back here, I just want you to put your hand on them. I don't want you to bless them. Just say, in Jesus' name, I bless you more, Lord. More, Lord. Thank you, Father. I bless you. I don't know who you are in the green right back here, but in Jesus' name, I just pray for a fresh filling of his spirit to come on you. Thank, hey, thank you. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, come. Pray increase right now. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Father, we thank you. Some of you are weary. I just feel like there are parents in here, hey, who are weary. Yep, that's all I'll say. Yeah, it's been hard. So in Jesus' name, I bless you right now. In Jesus' name. Every way that the enemy has stolen what the Lord has spoken over your family, I command that broken off of you right now in Jesus' name. This goes for any of you. This is not just for one person. If you need this, you ask the Lord, I need this word too, Lord. I need this word. So in Jesus' name, I declare every goodness that the Lord has designed for your family to carry, for your children to carry, to be released from heaven in Jesus' name. Everything stops today. We declare that the line has been drawn. No more can be robbed and no more can be stolen in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Lord speaks to me and I didn't share very many of them today, but the Lord speaks to me, hey, in visions and dreams often, bless you in Jesus' name, increase. In hey, hey, thank you, Jesus. The Lord speaks to me in dreams and visions. It is a lot of correction. It is a lot of alignment. It is a lot of destiny. And I feel like there are many of you, hey, who have lost the ability to dream with the Lord. And in this season, because of the prophecy that we know of in Joel chapter two, the Lord will pour out his spirit on all sons and daughters. They will dream dreams. They will have visions. That isn't slowing down right now but that is increasing. And so if you are one of those that you're like, I used to dream all the time. That's how he speaks to me, but it has slowed down. I want you to put your hand on your head right now so that I can see you. Hey, in the name of Jesus, I declare everything that has taken that communication and relationship from you I declare it gone right now in Jesus name. No more hold on you. No more hold on your nighttime communication and relationship with the Lord. Hey, in Jesus name, Holy Spirit, would you sweep over this room? We pray for an increase of the spirit of revelation to be released over this room in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus name, will you put your hands on Brandon? Hey. Lord, I thank you for this son. Lord, I thank you for the way that you speak to him during the day. And Lord, I pray that you would restore the nighttime in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you how he receives revelation from you. And I pray for an increase over you, my brother, in Jesus' name. Lord, everything lift that has been trying to divide, hey, even his nighttime sleep. I pray complete restoration over your mind in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you're deep. Hey, Brandon, this is for you. Father, I thank you that you're deep. The deep spirit of the Lord invites you. So in Jesus' name, I speak to your spirit, Brandon. 
and I command it to wake up, to wake up even greater. Yeah, Father, I thank you for what you have on this son's life. Lord, I bless him in Jesus' name. Rock of Roseville, some of you have children and you are eight minutes late to pick them up. And so I just want to invite you <laughs> to not forget the children. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for you. Hey, that the Lord, even today, that this is only a beginning of you allowing him to stir up in you. Because this is a season, guys. We are closer, and this is cliche, but it's so true. We are closer and closer, more closer than we've ever been before. There is a great harvest. I will share this dream with you. Just this week, I had a dream where I was standing in a field and I saw people who were looking at this tiny piece of paper. They were trying to figure it out. And when they were looking at this tiny piece of paper, I could feel I was so frustrated because they were standing around this great harvest that was taller than their heads. That is the season that we are in right now. And so if you are saying today, God of the harvest, I will be your laborer. You can have me. I will be your laborer in my family, in my workplace. I will be the laborer in my neighborhood. I will be the laborer in Starbucks and Walmart. Come on now. I want you to come up here because there is a fresh release of boldness that he is bringing to his sons and daughters in this season. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus.